The situation continues to unfold in China and all over the world. I'm going to give you all the information that you need to know. The first thing I want to look at is the China shutdown. I'll give you some updates and give you the latest data. The second thing I want to touch on is interest rates up. Can you believe it? This is the fastest pace of rate increases globally we have ever seen before. And the third thing I want to look at is power prices up. You see the inflation, you see what's happening to raw materials, input costs are up, so much is happening, all of that and more. Let's go. If you haven't seen yesterday's video already, I'm going to give you some information that continues on with that message. We we're talking about what's happening in China. This is the chart you need to see right off the bat. Power shortage, more than half of China's mainland provinces are limiting electricity use. You can see what's happening here. The number is now at 20. 20 of them okay so you're going to see the number 17 referenced that's an older number it is now at 20 as i record this probably might expand even even further so we're looking at this article here is just touching on the fact that china's energy crunch triggers shutdowns pleas for more coal they need coal but by the way that has gone up as well you're seeing what's happening here, the fears that the power cuts will hit traffic lights, 3G networks, factories, and so on. It has already hit different companies, and this is never going to be something that could be resolved overnight. It's going to take some time, and in between the time of uh, resolution and now, it is certainly going to cause some major disruptions okay the chinese province here a major stainless steel and ceramics making hub with an economy bigger than malaysia and singapore combined is the latest region to face electricity cuts bringing the total number of affected areas to at least 20 so they're rationing power i've seen the comments saying this is just something that happens all the time no worries this is just, you know it's just fear don't worry about it it's all good there hasn't been too many instances like this before, and I believe that we aren't in the worst of it. Will it be resolved? Most likely, but it's not something that's going to happen overnight, like I said. Now, why is this happening? There are different reasons, different explanations for it. We'll cover some, but off the screen over here, I have this article that's basically highlighting what Elon Musk said, and many others have said this as well, essentially that there was a lot of consumption with the mining of Bitcoin, and so that really was the kind of final nail in the coffin for china to say it is banned all the mining is banned we're going to ban everything to do with it but there's a alternate of course uh, reason for that because as he mentions they don't want what bitcoin stands for and that is less government control obviously they're going in a different direction with that chinese cities are in the dark after widespread unexpected Blackout. So you remember when this information originally came out and I brought it to you, the, there were comments all over and, and even articles being written about how these are planned blackouts. Yes, some of it is planned. Some of it, though, not the case. Just yesterday, we warned about a power supply shocking uh, looms, but the energy crisis grip in Europe, especially the UK, was set to hammer China. And just a few hours later, we see that happening. You could see the coal futures. Look at what happens with the price. The prices, as you see, thermal coal futures more than doubled in price. But it's no different than these others. I mean, it's going crazy all over the world and all different types of commodities. China's power crisis looks set to spur it to import more coal from a wider range of producers, putting it into competition with European and Indian buyers that are also snapping up more, more of this dirtiest fossil fuel, as they say. Now, they're talking about the whole issue related to power, and that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this article today and suggesting here that maybe... You know, they can go as a you know, where it's Indonesia, Russia, Mongolia, wherever. But what if they start to relax what has happened with Australia? You know, that was one place they really, really needed. But because of the tensions back and forth, well, maybe, maybe they will change that. So we're seeing that that that's something that the geopolitical aspect of this could be something to watch.
The local government of the northeastern province said that coal miners must produce at full capacity while financial institutions will offer the reduced interest loans to power plants in order to ensure supplies of the fuel for power and heating this winter. So they are pushing forward here, you know, having their hand in basically everything. The government wants to ensure stability, of course. They want more control and they are going for something here. I think there's more than one factor of course okay they're talking about the fertilizer market as well as i've talked about before remember whenever we're talking about food whenever we're talking about as they say here the the feedstock livestock everything you've got to remember fertilizer plays a role in that as an investor remember that okay china asking state-backed firms to pick up evergrande assets yes that's right (laughs) you know that garbage that they don't know what to do with buy it up you want to you want to look good in our books buy it up evergrande to sell 1.5 billion dollar stake in chinese bank as it faces another bond interest payment they can't pay their bills they got to sell the assets as i have said numerous occasions when a company goes bankrupt they have assets that have value they sell those off bankrupt companies don't disappear off the face of the earth right all their pieces at least don't disappear off the face of the earth they are sold off they are might be at a discount certainly but it doesn't just disappear employees may still be around okay that's that's something that we need to understand and anyway what we're seeing here with evergrande is still unfolding i'm going to bring you the details but let's talk about this more in the money gps insights china's crisis intensifies as prices increase and you have so many things converging all at once right now the crackdowns that are happening in China are worrying investors and you see the stock markets going down as a result of this. China's stock markets are way off their highs. Investors, no matter where you are globally, you must be prepared for more volatility. I told you a few minutes ago that this was the fastest pace of rate increases in history and you're seeing it right here. Can you believe it? We have not seen this happen before. How could it be? How could it be when the Federal Reserve is at 0% that has said they're not going to increase? Well, on a global scale, we are seeing this. I already told you how there was at least 25, I don't know if they mentioned it right there, but 25 different rate increases that have happened in 2021 by my count. So I'm sure there's much more than that. Number of global central bank hikes and cuts in our sample and hikes minus cuts on the right both on rolling 12 month basis so you're looking at that hard to get that number anyway is what i'm trying to say but um it looks like about 50 or so actually so i'm way off of that if they mention it right here 50 so regardless the the point here is that what we're seeing is a pace i wish we've never seen before at a time in which we're being told that interest rates are super low. Yes, they are historically, but that's why they can accelerate at such a fast pace. And that is going to impact the global markets. They're trying to, of course, calm down inflation. That's the point. Fed Chair Powell to warn Congress that inflation pressures could last longer than expected. That's right. Thank you, Powell, for saying that. But I'm sure you want to keep everything going, going, gone. Senator Warren calls Fed Chair Powell a dangerous man, says that she will oppose his renomination. That's right. When you get rid of Powell and you replace him with somebody else, oh, that's going to fix it all right. The two people that just resigned, uh, Kaplan Rosengren, were the more hawkish of the Fed. So now you have even more stimulus potentially, assuming that their votes are actually real. And as a result of this, it's just more of the same, okay? More of the same or worse. I give credit for Warren at least standing up for you know what you know her principles or whatever. Uh, I, I watched some of this you know, the whole, you know, in front of Congress, and it was just unbelievable. Oh, thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you, Chair Powell. You've done such a great job. Thank you so much. There was one person, she spoke for that, like the five minute period or whatever, and four minutes of it was just, was just, was just, 
horrible. At least be critical. At least say, what are you going to do? What are you going to make happen? Don't just sit there and say, oh, thank you, sobbing, loving this institution. It should be abolished. Big tech companies amass property holdings uh, during the last year and a half. Google, Amazon, Facebook acquire offices and retail space, helping prop up commercial real estate markets. That is absolutely true. They can't buy at all, but they've got the deep, deep pockets and they are getting real estate for the cheap right now. Retailers warn supply chain delays could wreak havoc on Bay Area holiday shopping season. This is something about, you know, what I was showing you with the UK that, you know, Christmas might be canceled this year. And they're talking about the products, of course, that people need to get. And there's actually one other I think I have in just a moment here. West Coast ports need more funds, Los Angeles chief says. So if they want to be able to bring those in, those items in, well, we need more people. They're I know that's the busiest port, obviously, generally, but there are other ports. I don't understand why the other ports and lesser known ports are not being used. I'm sure they're they're busy as well, but they need to increase their capacity as well. It can't just be one. Millions of Britons could face national shortage of turkeys this Christmas. Trees and toys are also at risk. So the problem, of course, is existing all around the world. Look at what's happening with the prices that Europeans are paying. Please, if you're in Europe right now, let me know. Have your prices increased? Put it in the comment section below. And if you appreciate the fact that I always try to crowdsource the information directly from the source itself, okay, from the grassroots, give me a thumbs up to support the channel because that's what this channel is. It's aggregating data from all sources, including you. I appreciate that. European one-year forward electricity, spot natural gas, spot thermal coal, and spot CO2 emissions prices have risen again this morning to fresh all-time highs. So in basically every category, they're increasing, okay? This happens to be, you know, your emissions prices. So what's going to happen? Company has to pay more. Company passes it on to their customers. It's just the way it is. Jeans, I can't believe I'm reading this, but jeans could get pricey after cotton prices reach a decade high. So you got a t-shirt on, you got to pay more, all right? You got to pay more for that, for that. That's what they're saying now. I mean, have you ever heard of this? It's crazy. It's crazy. Everything's going up. What about houses? Phoenix up, what is that? 32%, 32% year over year. It is completely and entirely unjustified. San Diego, Seattle, Tampa, Dallas, all down the list, 20% plus. Fed's inflation target, as they mentioned here, 2%, not even close. Housing market risk jumps to a high in Canadian government rating. Nobody cares because the prices continue to escalate in Canada. I can tell you that right now, in the major cities especially, but hey, I shouldn't even say that because actually the smaller cities saw an extreme rise and and still are seeing that. Bank of Canada to let inflation run hot. Oh, that's right. They are doing the exact same thing as the Federal Reserve. And why? Oh, because um, we're going to just make sure that everything's A-OK before we increase rates and stop printing money. And And the difference here is that Canada has reduced their money printing. Okay, that's one factor. But understand, as they mentioned in the article here, that the longer you let it go for, the faster you need to increase rates. And that has a dramatic negative effect on the economy. If you do it too fast, which they will have to, and it happens every single time, that they will crush the economy as a result and the markets too. All right. If you want to join the insiders, it's easy, it's free. That's my way of getting to you directly. Five days a week, I'll email you and you can sign up right here for free. It is uh, at this card or at themoneygps.com. And once again, support the channel by clicking that like button. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen this video I did about China, it's absolutely blowing up. You gotta check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.